This is part two of how to solve absolute value equations. In part one, we ended up with a way of solving an absolute value equation where you had the absolute value of some stuff was equal to k, k is some number that is not equal to zero, and k is also greater than zero. That you could take whatever is inside the absolute value and it equals k, or you take the stuff inside the absolute value and it equals negative k. We'll be dealing with a situation where k is zero or if it's negative later. But let's first go through a particular problem like 2x minus 1 equals negative 7 using this definition. The stuff inside the absolute value is 7. So basically whatever is in there, if it was equal to 7, this would be a true statement, right? But if what was in there was negative 7, it would also be a true statement. So that's where this comes from. Whatever's in there, the 2x minus 1, it could equal 7 or negative 7. So we'll be ending up solving two equations, 2x minus, 7, uh, 2x minus 1 equals 7, or there's two totally separate equations to solve. 2x minus 1 equals negative 7. You can't do it all in one step. You have to actually write out both equations and write the word or. So we're going to do this now. So here's the problem again. Solve absolute value of 2x minus 1 equal to 7. And we separate this into two separate equations. You take what's in the absolute value right, which is 2x minus 1, it can either equal 7 or negative 7. So now we just solve each of these equations, and we're going to have to add 1 to both sides. Now both of them we're going to have to add 1 to both sides, right, both equations. So I have 2x equals 8, and then if we divide both sides by 2, we get x equals 4. So that looks like that's one solution. And then over on the right-hand side, we have 2x equals negative 6. And then when we divide by 2, we get x equals negative 3. All right, so it looks like there's two solutions to this absolute value equation. And that's true. We want to make sure that we check our answer by plugging in 4 into the original equation and making sure it's true. And then we're going to do it again, plug in negative 3 into the original equation and make sure it's a true equation. So we write down the original equation and then we're going to plug in, first let's check 4. We're going to do 2 times 4 minus 1. Remember we could just do this little t-bar, which I usually do. And get a little more space here. So we have absolute value of 8 minus 1. And you do have to keep simplifying inside the absolute value until you just get a single number, and then you can take the absolute value. So the absolute value of 7 is 7. And on the right-hand side, we have 7. So it checks. That means x equals 4 is one of your solutions. And now we're going to do the same thing over here. We're going to plug in negative 3 for x. So that's 2 times a negative 3 minus 1, and again, you're going to simplify inside the absolute value. So that's negative 6 minus 1, which is finally absolute value of negative 7. And then what's the absolute value of negative 7? It's 7, and the right-hand side 7. So x equals negative 3 is also a solution. So the solution to the problem is there are two solutions, 4 and negative 3. Remember, you could use the solution set braces and a comma between the two numbers, and there's no order because they're just two solutions. Now, what's important is we're going to use this definition where we've got some stuff equaling to k, where k is greater than 0, and we're going to take the stuff and equal to k, or we're going to take all that stuff and equal to negative k. Then what's important to notice is you have isolated the absolute value on the left side of the equal sign. It really could be on the right side. It just has to be isolated. And if it's not, you're going to have to do something first to isolate the two sides. So here's an example. What about if you had something like 2x minus 1, absolute value of 2x minus 1, plus 5 equal to 6? you cannot use this above definition because the absolute value is not 
all by itself on one side of the equation. So the very first step is to isolate this part. So there's only the absolute value on that side of the equation. And to do that, we need to subtract 5 from both sides. You can't add 1. That's inside the absolute value. Don't try that out. All right, so if I do that, now I've got the absolute value of 2x minus 1 on one side of the equation and 1 on the other side, and now we can go ahead and solve this. So how do we do it? We take what's in the absolute value. Remember, if you want the answer to be 1, when you take the absolute value, then whatever's inside the absolute value is going to be negative 1 or 1, right? Just think about that for a minute. Whatever's inside there, if it was a negative 1, when you take the absolute value, of one, you'll get 1. And if whatever's in there was a 1, when you take the absolute value, you would get a 1. So that's where we come up with our two equations. Whatever's inside there, 2x minus 1 equals 1, or whatever's inside there could equal negative 1. Both of those will work. So now let's solve these equations by adding 1 to both sides and then dividing by 2. So on the left hand side I get x equals 1 and we're going to do the same thing on the right. We're going to add 1 to both sides and then I'm going to divide both sides by 2. So we came up with two solutions, x equals 1 or x equals 0, and of course we're going to check them now. All right, so remember one of the solutions was 1, the other solution was 0. We must check it in the original problem, not after you subtract 5 from both sides. So the original problem was absolute value of 2x minus 1 plus 5 equals 6. And we're going to plug in 1 to this first one and simplify the left-hand side of the equation. And remember, you're going to simplify inside the absolute value until you get a single number, and then you could take the absolute value of that single number. So I have absolute value of 2 minus 1 plus 5. 2 minus 1 is 1, so I've got the absolute value of 1 plus 5. And now we have a single number 1 in there, absolute value of 1 is 1, so 1 plus 5 is 6. That's right, those are all the steps. And on the right hand side, there's a 6, so when I plugged in x equals 1, it checked, so yes, that is a correct solution. Now we're going to do the same thing by plugging in 0 for x into the original problem. So we have... 2 times 0 minus 1 plus 5. And we're going to keep, again, simplifying inside the absolute value using the order of operations. 0 minus 1 plus 5. 0 minus 1 is negative 1. So I end up with the absolute value of negative 1 plus 5. Absolute value of negative 1 is 1. 1 plus 5 is 6. So I've simplified the left-hand side of the equation. The right-hand side is already simplified. It's a 6. So that means x equals 0 is also a solution. So the original problem, remember, was solve this problem. Okay? And so the answer, remember, we got that x equals 1 and x equals 0. So the answer is 0 and 1. That's the solution. All right. So we've done a couple problems where the number on the right-hand side of the equal sign was positive. We isolated the absolute value. Go on to the next video, and we're going to do some more cases where it's equal to 0 or a negative number on the right-hand side of the equation.